Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, he is a mixed martial artist standing 5 feet 11 inches tall. He weighed in officially 176 pounds and brings a 39 fight record into the cage, standing at 26 victories and 13 defeats. From Chelmsford, Essex, England, here is Jack the Stone. And next is opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. A mixed martial artist standing 5 feet 10 inches tall. He weighed in officially 174 and 1 quarter pounds and brings a professional record of 10 victories, 5 defeats and 1 draw. He joins us tonight from Paris, France. Please welcome Dexter Patrick Valet! Once again, referee Mark Goddard with the final instructions. Referee Mark Goddard about to get things underway. Three five minute rounds at a catch weight. Okay, gents, both understand the rules you're fine under. Listen to me at all times, keep yourself protected. When I say stop, you stop. Touch gloves, let's do this. Both these men in talks to fight for about three weeks, but the fight only confirmed two weeks ago, hence the 176 pound catch weight. You're used to seeing both these gentlemen at mid uh, welterweight, beg your pardon. And I just got what they call Ready, Patrick Jack. Valley Dexter. Okay. Let's go. <laughs> Striking resemblance to the fictional serial killer of the same name. I mean, both these guys have fought on plenty of big stages, perhaps a bit more of the wider experience going to Patrick Valet, despite the vastly <laughs> huge number of fights that Jack Mason has had. Valet's fought all over an M1 Challenge, Superior Challenge in Sweden, and now here on Cage Warriors. Mason, no stranger to a bit of travel with Cage Warriors himself. Yeah, taking part in his 40th professional fight tonight, Josh. Something like his third, 12th or 13th for Cage Warriors alone, so really getting the time in the cage. Perhaps trying to close in on that record held by Judo Jim Wallhead, the record holder for most Cage Warriors fights, and of course he'll return yeah. in just a few weeks' time to take on Danny Roberts. What a fight that's going to be in Liverpool. The domestic fight of the year, without a doubt. Nice left hand there from Patrick Valet. A bit of a mean mug on him in the cage. He's been smiles all week, but snarling away at Jack Mason here to start this one off. Yeah. Mason already throwing more punches than we've seen from him in previous outings. Mason was originally looking to get matched on that card in Liverpool in two weeks' time. The fight scheduled for this one, though, hence the catch weight and a good catch of the kick from Mason. If anything, Patrick Valley known for his jiu-jitsu game. Yeah, Mason's going to have to base out now because Valet can take him one way or the other here. Mason talking to us earlier in the week. Oh, lovely work from Valet and a huge throw. Incredible stuff from Patrick Valet. I, mean, I was going to say, to, to stand up and reek the leg was fantastic, but then to flip him back, what a phenomenal transition from the Frenchman. I was, I was about to say, Josh, one of the reasons that Mason was perhaps looking for a more punch-heavy game plan was to avoid the ground game of Patrick Valet, but oh, he's in the trap now. Oh, we've seen Mason get armbarred by Danny Roberts when he fell off the top here. He's going to have to be careful. And they are back on their feet. Well, we've got a taste of what the power in the ground game of Patrick Valet is like, and it is certainly impressive. Exchange of jabs there. Talked to a lot of people who've trained with Jack over the years. Guys at Tsunami in Cambridge, guys at BKK. And they all say he's a very, very heavy-handed guy. We don't really see a lot of striking from him. But that power is there. He's just got to have the confidence to go forward and throw it. You know that he's got the strength if they get in a clinch to deal with it. Perhaps it was just a few more punches that would have won him that fight against Benny Alloway. A few more punches that would have won him the fight against Ali Arish in Liverpool last year. Certainly not afraid to stand the trade here tonight is Jack Mason. Just swift on that combination there, did Patrick Valet. Straight right thrown from Jack the Stone Mason. Oh, 
taking the centre of the cage, ducked under that shot from Patrick Vallée. I'd like to see Mason just pull the trigger a little bit more, Josh. Yeah, I think you're absolutely right. Good oh, head kick landed. Valet, though, as you say, it just seems like he's holding back on each one of the punches a little bit. Nice to see him really step through them, but I mean, Valet is always going to present a danger. Nice left hand there, eliciting a round of applause from Mason's corner. Looking to give them the confidence to let those mitts go. Mason throwing the combination, pinning his man up against the fence. I mean, this is what we've seen so much from Jack Mason, this methodical game against the cage, working for the takedowns. They're going to pin the man there and grind out the short shots. Of course, we saw against guys like Matt Inman and uh, Opanasenko. And if he can get that top position, those elbows come thick and fast. When Jack Mason turns up to 11, there's few that can withstand that barrage of ground and pound that he's capable of delivering. And let's see if he opts to do the work up against the fence. So I'll go for that takedown against Valet, but Valet exploding off the fence there with a combination of strikes. It's really nice to see the head kick on the end of that. A lot of guys will assume that one or two punches are coming, but to keep surging forward like that was nice work from the Frenchman. You've got to say, the most significant action of that round was the takedown in the dominant position for Patrick Vallée, and perhaps that is what's going to give him that first round. Let's take a look at some of the action from that first frame. This was a good catch of the kick from Mason, but watch here how Vallée stands up, wraps the leg up, and then completely changes the angle on Mason. Here we go. Comes up on the single with the wrap, and then watch this throw. Absolutely phenomenal stuff. Connected his hips right under Mason's centre of gravity and just launched the Englishman. Patrick Ballet really is a joy to watch. Mason bull rushing forward there. I mean, not, neither guy landing too successfully on the feet. Not with really clean strikes anyway. <laughs> a furious combination off the fence there from Patrick Ballet. Mark Goddard about to get this second round underway. We hope you've enjoyed all the action tonight at Cage Warriors Fight Night 11. Potentially two rounds still to go in your main event. Jack Mason, Patrick Vallee. Joining the conversation on social media at Cage Warriors. Give us your thoughts on this event. We'd love to hear them. We'd also love to hear your additions to the rumor mill for Cage Warriors Super Saturday coming this June. What's going to happen? Who knows? Let us know what you think. It's Patrick Vallée mixing it up with his strikes. Again, it's a good decision from Vallée to keep Mason guessing. Doubling up with the left hand there was Mason. I'm surprised Vallée hasn't come in for a bit more of a takedown in these open range scenarios. Nice counter punch there from Patrick Vallée. Mason with the right. Vallée threw him right back. Doubling up on that jab again is Jack Mason. Vallée looking for counter shots at the moment on the feet. Good left hand there as Mason came forward. him on looking to give him that confidence in his strikes when he lands Ballet still looking very light on his feet here just over three minutes to go in the second round plenty of time for either man to stamp their authority on this second frame both guys not quite stepping through their strikes here Still staying slightly on the outside. Lateral movement by Patrick Vallée. Stop himself getting backed up onto that cage. The last thing you want to do in a striking exchange is move straight backwards in the line. Nice left hand landing from Vallée there in that exchange. Mason firing straight back though. 
Well, Big knee from Valet. Yeah, Didn't quite get much on it. In on a single now as he drives Mason back against the cage. And try and connect his hands for a double, double now down for the ankle pick. Mason stripping the grip. You can see that left hand in front of the face is going to help him create a sort of frame to keep Valet off him. Well, going for the, under, the uh, overhook now. Patrick Valet trying to change the flow of this fight, looking to put Mason down. And let's see if he looks to get the hips underneath Mason again. Oh, and that knee went a little yeah, bit yeah. south of the border and an immediate apology from Patrick Valet. You know, you can hear it bounce off the cup. Completely unintentional. Accidental low blow there. Bit of blood coming from Mason's face. Not sure if it's coming from his nose. I believe his lip might have a little nick on it. And Mason had five minutes there, but opted to get right back into the mix. Mason really throwing with a bit more intention there. Good level change, but meets one underhook. He has got right in on the hips of Mason, though. It's going to be very interesting if Patrick Valet can get this takedown because one thing we do not see a lot of from Jack Mason is him being on the bottom position, Josh. That is very true, but you could see Valet look to drop his level there. That, that left overhook of Mason is going to do a lot of the work in keeping Valet high and tied up in this upper body clinch. That's fine, guys. Don't hold. And there's the break from Mark Goddard. He called for action, didn't get what he wanted, and he restarts from standing. Leg kick from Mason, but Valley took that right on the knee. Mason throwing hands here. Yeah, I mean, somebody can take this round here with something decisive. Question is, who's it going to be? Clear gains throwing up. That head kick didn't get through though. Mason still coming forward. Walking his man around the cage. Oh, a nice kick there from Patrick Vallee. Keeping Jack Mason guessing. And there's Mason with the right hand. Trying to stay unpredictable, Mason sticking with a much more oh, traditional boxing. Oh, from Patrick Vallee. Things are heating up here at the end of the second, Josh. Stop. Well, what a close round that was. Could almost be inclined to give it a 10-10. And that right hand that Jack Mason landed at the end of the round. Got a little nod and a smile from Patrick Valley, and that usually tells it landed. Hey, I mean, we saw when, when Jack Mason fought uh, Norman Parisi, he went down to a jumping knee. Valet's tried several in that round. Let's take a look at some of the action now. There's a couple of attempts, as you said, Josh, for jumping techniques. I think he faked that one to get in on the takedown. Wasn't able to get it, though. One of a number of high kick attempts that we've seen from the Frenchman in this fight. Nice combination there from Mason. Yeah, finding the guard of Valet, though. And here's another jumping knee attempt. Really caught Jack Mason in the chest with that one. I think somebody needs to go out and really take this round decisively because this fight is close now. Anybody's to win. Jack Mason, Patrick Valet, third and final round here at Cage Warriors Fight Night 11. Brad Wharton and Josh Palmer, privileged to be calling the action for you. Five minutes to win it. Five minutes for Jack Mason to get back on track in the welterweight division. Five minutes for Patrick Valet to cause an upset here in the main event of Fight Night 11. I mean, Mason was a heavy favourite with the bookies when betting closed at the start of this fight. And Mason earning a good takedown. Half guard for him here, but Valet has got that left underhook. Exactly what he's going to be looking for. It's what he used to stand up in that first round and then execute that fantastic throw. Patrick Valet was the underdog. Plus 185, Jack Mason minus 265. This fight so far been a lot closer than those lines suggest, Josh. Yeah, it really has. And thanks to the guys at MMA Odds Breaker for tweeting us those odds. Always on hand to let us know how the bookmakers see things. 
Mason with that high underhook on the left-hand side. He's got that right hand blocking any knee that might come up from Valet to strike him. The referee Mark got up warning Jack Mason about fingers in the fence there. Sometimes you just can't help it, Josh. It's instinct when you're pressed up against the cage. Certainly not a dirty fight by any I mean, definition, yeah, Jack I mean, Mason. Sometimes you're just trying to put your palm on the cage and the fingers slip through, but, you know, good advice from Mark Goddard there, make a fist. Mark Goddard calling for action. Mason landing a lot of these knees. Can't tell how much damage they're really doing, and clearly not enough for Mark Goddard. Patrick Valet had flashed Mark Goddard a glance there as if to say, how long are you going to give this? The answer was not long. Mason comes out behind that jab again. He said he wanted to come out and punch more. He's done that. Nice right hand landed behind the jab for Jack Mason that time. Pumping out that lead left fist. It's Jack the Stone Mason. Patrick Valley staying on his toes. Keeping just out of range. Neither one of these guys is putting together too many combinations either. A lot of these exchanges are single shots, maybe one or two. And again, they're not following with any knees, they're not following with any kicks, any takedown attempts. Very much sporadic exchanges of the hands at the moment. Nice combination there from Mason. He's calling a roar and approval. Trying to egg the man on. Two minutes left to play for. Can one of them do something spectacular and save our judges? The no doubt monumental task of <laughs> rendering a decision in this one, Josh. Trying to separate these two. Oh, big left hand from Mason there. He ducked under the hook from Valet. Yeah, deep breath from Valet. That one landed, and that's a good, significant strike for Jack Mason. Let's see if that gives him some confidence to up the work rate for the last minute and a half here. That's all someone really needs to do is change the tempo, up the work rate, really try and take this round. Just under 90 seconds left in this catchweight contest. Oh, snapping, snapping shot there. The crack of that one echoed around the King Hussein Youth City Boxing Arena here in Jordan. Definitely a few cringes at cage side as we think of Tyrant Spong in recent weeks breaking his leg. Oh, and Valet shoots for the takedown. Does score it. He's going to try and really pull the hips of Mason away to stop him posting and walking back up the cage, something he is so good at. See him trying to strip that, that post away now. Of course, he can't strike here because he's got to worry about holding on to Mason's hips, which means Mason isn't in a huge amount of danger of accepting damage, but what it is going to do is keep him on the floor for the moment. But he's desperately trying to pull the legs of Mason out from under him. Final 20 seconds in the third and final round. He's trying to triangle them as well. Mason's staying busy. Final 10 seconds here. Valet's not going to have much time to do anything. Jack Mason trying these short shots as Valet passes to side control. Well, a good end to the round for him. Let's, I mean, oh, I just don't know. It's so close. On, this isn't that much to separate each of them. Well, we leave it now to our judges to render a decision after what really was a razor thin contest. Fantastic night in mixed martial arts action here at Cage Warriors Fight Night 11. Our sixth show in 63 days. Whichever way you look at it, Josh, that's impressive. We're back in just a few weeks' time for the big one in Liverpool. Let's take a look at some of the action from our main event, the third and final round. Valley going down there after the leg kick attempt was thwarted. Good takedown from Jack Mason, but Valley was able to explode back to his feet. Of course, this prolonged period of knees. I mean, maybe Jack he had a good shot in here as well. Good left hand. Big maybe left that hand was there. enough to give him this round. Could be Patrick Valley faking and shooting a takedown. 
Our judges are rendering their decision as we speak. And we will hand this one over to our world-class MC, Joe Martinez, who is in the cage for the official result. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds, we go to the scorecards, and here are the judges' totals. Both Cartledge and Sledge have it 30 to 27. Judge David Leatherby, 29, 28. All three for your winner by unanimous decision. Jack the Stone Mason! A unanimous decision for Jack Mason. Patrick Vallee briefly looking disappointed and then congratulating his friend, the former training partner. And a very excited Jack Mason letting out a roar of satisfaction. Back on track. In the welterweight division is the Stone Mason. Yeah, nice for him to pick up a win in what is his 40th professional fight. Congratulations to Jack.